A great New York tradition is underway in Little Italy. I'm amazed that Al Roker is still here in the studio. <laughs> the San Gennaro Festival is a crowded, noisy affair that never seems to change. No one cares. The neighborhood, on the other hand, has changed a lot. News for us, Bill Boggs is there. Bill? Sue, thank you very much. Yes, Al was cited at least five times today. The San Gennaro Festival going from West Houston up there all the way down to Canal down there. When you think of it, you think of it as kind of a rowdy street party, sounds like that, with people shoving sausages in themselves until 2 o'clock in the morning. Well, that's true, but it's also a festival that has uniquely and deeply religious origins. The big 10-day party venerates St. Gennaro, martyred in 305 A.D., whose body is preserved in this tomb in Naples. The block party celebration has been going on in New York for 68 years. And it started at a time when Little Italy itself was a much larger place. The massive influx of Italians to America ended around 1924, and Little Italy has been shrinking for decades. Growing up here as a kid, I never knew there were other people besides Italians, because that's all this neighborhood was. From when I was born up until 20 years ago, it was all Italian. In the 70s, Little Italy was zoned with borders of Canal, Bleecker, the Bowery, and Lafayette Streets. The San Gennaro Festival parties in an area being steadily eclipsed by Chinese businesses. Now the heart of Little Italy is a tiny stretch of Mulberry Street from Canal to Broome with a little Italian flavor on the side streets. But today's San Gennaro Festival is larger than anywhere in Italy and it has loyal followers. We just traveled 3,800 miles from California to get out here. I'm a transplanted Brooklynite and I had to come 3,800 miles just to come here to have something decent to eat. So look for sausage and peppers, zeppelins frying in peanut oil, all kinds of Italian pastries, stuffed artichokes, stuffed shells, and street games to test your skills and strength. Or you could just have your picture taken with this distinctly non-Italian lounge lizard. Take that picture right. All right, let's go for a little quick stroll in the San Gennaro Festival. This is a typical stand right here. They got the sausage, the brujol, right there, the cold beer. Hey, they, take a look over here. You can uh, win a goldfish by tossing a, a ball in a little thing. And this right here, look at this. They got everything. ESP, tarot card, the reader advisor. Let's see what we can find out. Hi, how you doing? How are you? I'm all right. What's your name? Anna. So this is a full service ESP establishment? Yes, it is. All right, uh, you know Sue Simmons? Oh, yes, I do. Can we turn a couple tarot cards for Sue Simmons, Anna? Sure. Let's see what we get. We got this one, but take a look at that. And we got this one, you see them? Yes, All right, Sue, take a look at your cards. Uh -huh. Now, what do they mean? It shows me here for Sue Simmons, very soon she's gonna have romance in her life. Oh, that's very good. Uh, well, anything else? Whoa. Yes, a career. Right, we got something else. A career change. What kind of career uh -oh. change? Uh -oh. Early morning talk show. <laughs> early morning, sounded good. Wait, so, give me more out? details, how early? 4 a.m. in the morning. Four. 4 a.m.? Yes. Sue, I'll see you early in the morning. Have a nice weekend. Get some sleep. Thank you, Bill. As long as I'm working, it's all right. Well, when it comes to fashion, no wasting time. Fall's here. The leaves have barely started changing, and already spring is in the air. Can't you feel it? Buyers from across America were at the Javits Center today for a large exhibition of women's apparel and accessories geared to springtime. News Sports Bill Boggs is there live. Bill? Well, Sue, thank you very much. Stop and think about it for a second, Sue and everybody. You know, we really face a long and cold winter here in New York. And think of the clothes you have to wear during the winter. Those big boots and heavy skirts and pants, layers of different sweaters, coats, hats, scarves, gloves. But beyond that, as Sue said, there will be a springtime. And that means there will be spring fashions, 1995. And buyers from all over America today were wandering through the Javits Center thinking about what the fashions are going to be like for you in 1995. Where will the meandering course of fashion lead us in the spring? There were hundreds of styles available at the New York Premier Collection at the Javits Center. Do the fashion pros think it adds up to any one direction? Well, it's going to lead to a very sexy woman, I think. I think we're going to see a lot of color, which is really refreshing after season after season of black. A lot of fitted jackets, fitted tops. It's really about being beautiful again. It's going to go very shiny, very pale, very um, cool. Experts also say the waist look is out and grunge is quickly leaving. Ahead, a potential reprise of mid-70s styles. 
a tailored and polished appearance, masculine pantsuits, and red lips. And ready for this? Stiletto heels are coming back. But can women really walk on them? Yes, they can. And in fact, a lot of the heels look higher than they actually are. And they are comfortable, and people are wearing them. It's an illusion. They, they, the shape, the proportions of the heel look like they're higher than they actually are. Also look for odd-shaped hats and lots of gingham, aprons as fashion, and plenty of pastels. What does the show organizer foresee? In the spring, we're going to see a return to glamour for the first time for several years and a much more feminine look and approach. So, springtime 95, a return to glamour, femininity, and color. Well, if you don't like the color that your skin looks when it's gotten too many dangerous UV rays from the sun, I discovered something that I found quite fascinating here. Ozone Aware Clothing. Joel Stander, you're marketing this. What sure. actually is it? It was developed in Australia. Yes, it was developed in Australia because of the depletion of the ozone layer. People have become very aware, and so they're wearing protective clothing. But doesn't clothing normally protect you from the sun? No, not normally. Usually the, the rays are more Knit than clothing just... Knit clothing does. Knit clothing. It's more than just the sun. It's ultraviolet rays that right. penetrate through... And here's, here's a look at an outfit. Like if you can look at Nina modeling that. What's so special about it? How is it treated? Well, it's a special process that's done in the finishing process of the fabric. It has no harmful effects to the environment, right. and you don't feel it, but what it does is protect the, the product from 98% of the UV rays. All right, Joel, it's good. The product. I hope you have, like, some kind of an after-sun garment that you can wear, too. Thank yes. you. Uh, Matt and Sue, this is actually the end of the show here at the Javits Center, as you might be able to tell. We'll have to wait and see what things are going to look like. Back to you at Live at 5, Matt and Sue. Brooke Shields and Andre Agassi made no secret of their feelings for one another during the U.S. Open. It looked like kind of a love match. Rumor has it they may be getting hits real soon. News Force Bill Boggs is live at a bridal shop in Bayside with the latest. Bill? Yes, I'm at Kleinfeld in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, Matt. Uh, by the way, they sell more bridal gowns here than any store in America, the biggest business in the United States. And you can see behind me some lovely women trying on their bridal gowns for the big day. Good luck down there. Hope you do better than I did. Anyway, I ended up here because I started out this morning in search of a copy of the bridal gown that Brooke Shields purchased for a wedding. Well, the Daily News reported this morning that a friend of Brooke's was invited to a wedding this weekend in Wyoming. I talked to Brooke's office. They said she is definitely not getting married. But why would she buy a wedding dress? So Brooke Shields marry Andre Agassi this weekend. The couple vaulted into the public's attention at the U.S. Open when Brooke appeared at all of Andre's matches. He captured the Open, and it was obvious that love had captured the couple. So Brooke walked into Diamond Bridal at 1385 Broadway recently to select something from the collection. It would appear she was shopping for bridal attire. Or was she? Did showroom employees know? We don't know anything about any wedding. We saw it in the newspaper. That's the first time we heard of it. At Kleinfeld in Brooklyn, I found a copy of the dress with Brooke's longtime friend, bridal business owner, Paul Diamond. Okay, this is a beautiful silk gazar gown. It is a ball gown look. It has a sweetheart neckline with a button closure, basque waist, a very full ball gown skirt, and it has pretty detailing on the back, as you can see with the buttons going down to the bottom of the zipper. So do you think that Brooke is going to marry Andre Agassi in that dress? Honestly, no. I think they do intend to get married. But this particular gown, as she told me personally, is for a ball that she will be attending sometime in November, a black and white ball. If there are rings in their weekend plans, it'll be a dual career marriage with Andre on the tennis tour and Brooke in Greece, replacing Rosie O'Donnell on November 22nd. One thing is certain, if she does walk down the aisle soon, she'll be relaxed in the gown. Brooke has been modeling wedding dresses for years. As for Andre, he's already very comfortable wearing a ring. All right, let's take a closer look at the, the dress. Gwen, this is the actual dress that uh, Brooke purchased. Hi, Gwen. How are you? Hi, how are you? So this could be worn to a ball, but it also could be a wedding dress as well. Oh, of course, many different occasions. And by the way, where did you get your wonderful suit? Uh, rented it across the street at Zeller's Tuxedo. It's conveniently located across. Do you think uh, Brooke is going to get married this weekend? Who knows? Maybe. <laughs> uh, let's say hello quickly to a couple of the other brides. Hi. Hi. Congratulations in advance. What's your name? Julie. You look great in this dress. Uh, what do you think about these Brooke Shields rumors? I saw them at the open, and they seem very in love. All right, we have one other lovely woman here. Hi. Congratulations in advance. Very What's your much. name? Susan. 
Susan, you have a let's show everybody this gorgeous rock on your finger. Who is a lucky man? They will love you, David. David, well, that is one beautiful ring. Now, what do you think about Brooke and Andre? I think they should have a little privacy, but hopefully they'll get married this weekend and have a wonderful life together. Well, the man who sold her the dress says for sure she's wearing this dress to a ball, not a wedding this weekend, but as we know, it's only Friday, and uh, anything can happen over a weekend, right? Now, I want all you brides to say, hi, live at 5. Hi, live at 5. Bye-bye. Back to you, Matt. <laughs> all right, Bill, we'll let you go. We know you have to get the tux back real soon. Thanks very much. <laughs> well, maybe you have one of those new prepaid phone cards, or debit cards, as they're called. They are designed for convenience. But did you know they're also becoming one of the hottest new collector's items? News Force Bill Boggs is live at 9X offices in Midtown. Tell us more about the collecting craze. Bill? Well, thanks, Matt. Yes, I'm here at the 9X office. I want to show you something brand new. Over the course of the next two years, you're going to see about 5,000 of these yellow phones installed around town. Now, they're not like a normal phone because they take something called a prepaid phone card. Actually, paying for your phone calls in advance, this is very popular in Europe, very popular in Asia. What's really interesting is the actual cards themselves are becoming collectibles that are as hot as baseball cards or comic books. This is new stuff. X-Men, who can help you make phone calls. Or reach out to someone on a Mickey Mantle phone card. Prepaid telecard pioneer Prepaid Paul telecard Silverstein explains. Basically, it's a card with an image on the front. Comes with an 800 number on the back, which people would dial. Then they would enter in the unique PIN number that's on the back of each card. When they enter in that PIN number, it tells them how many minutes they get to use to make phone calls anywhere in the United States or overseas. The cards help consumers budget calls, limit their lost or stolen liability, and enable parents to help control children's phone bills. At the same time, they're highly collectible, and Alex Reardon of Long Island has the world's largest collection. They have gone up considerably more than baseball cards because they do serve an intrinsic purpose. You can actually make telephone calls with these things. Baseball cards don't even come with sticks of gum anymore. Telecards are the new canvas for artist Peter Max who designed the poster for this weekend's telecard show at the Javits Center and has a line of Max phone cards. These cards is kind of like the key to get in. Sometimes on the telephone or to computers, you'll be able to buy things with them. You'll be able to even charge back with your American Express card or MasterCard if you're running out of time and put another $100 on it. The cards will come with either a PIN number code or Stripe to insert in the new phone and three unlikely phone card pals. The Ripley three-headed cow, Felix the cat, and Fabio. And if Fabio is there, can Al Roker be far behind? Now, let me make sure you understand how this works. Here is a New York Rangers prepaid phone card. The front part is the collectible part. Now, look on the back. See, it says $10. That means that this card will be worth $10 worth of phone calls. Where do you buy them? Well, they're gonna, you're going to see a lot of charge cards, so machines like this around town. You're going to see a lot of yellow phones. But right now, variety stores and newsstands sell them as well. It's a whole new world out there, Matt and Sue. Well, chocolate lovers, we have a slice of heaven to tell you about right in Times Square. We're talking about a weekend filled with world-class chocolate, all kinds of sweet stuff that will definitely please your palate. News Force Bill Boggs is live at the Marriott Marquis with more. Bill? Matt, if this doesn't please your palate, I don't know what does, my friend. This is the benefit. Share our strength three-day activity in search of the perfect chocolate. I want to show you some very quickly. Have you ever seen a Statue of Liberty made into chocolate? That's a small sample of what's happening here at the Marriott Marquis Hotel in a couple minutes. A grand tasting. Take a look at this. This is a chocolate espresso parfait from Piatti's in Englewood, New Jersey. Chefs from all over the tri-state area. This wonderful, uh, this is a beautiful chocolate mousse cake. This is a Desiree diamond, which looks like a candy, but inside it is actually a piece of cake. Stop for one moment, will you? and think a little bit about the role that chocolate plays in so many people's lives. Chocolate. Some people walk around all day craving it. And it comes in some pretty basic, inexpensive forms. But elaborate preparations have gone into every bite of these world-class creations, like flaming baked Alaska with chocolate sorbet inside, or this aphrodisiac chocolate mousse from Chef David Ruggiero. Well, what's in this? This is the world's finest chocolate, accented with sweet cream, ginger, and orange and saffron. But do people who really want their daily chocolate care if it's highbrow or if it just comes in a wrapper? Outside Le Chantilly restaurant, home of the aphrodisiac chocolate,
we conducted a taste test on passing chocolate fanatics between the chef's creation and a regular candy bar. I'm going to give you a little taste of this traditional chocolate candy bar, okay? Take a little taste of that. Okay, next up. Go ahead, have a little bite. Now I'd like you to have a taste of this aphrodisiac chocolate mousse. And the result? Aphrodisiac. By far the chocolate aphrodisiac. The aphrodisiac mousse. Aphrodisiac chocolate mousse seven. Incredible. It's just so many layers of flavor in it. It's nice and smooth. Absolutely fantastic. Traditional candy bar, zero. I'm a chocoholic. I mean, I just die over chocolate. <laughs> why? I don't know why. It's like, you know, when you're an alcoholic, you don't know why. Well, I'm a chocoholic, and I just can't help myself. Well, if you'd like to get a little bite of some chocolate this weekend, there are tickets available for all kinds of events, tastings, seminars, what have you. The number is 212-675-5525. Matt, let's go out with a beautiful piece of chocolate sculpture here created by restaurant Danielle. How would you like to break off a little of that violin, yeah, huh? Good, Bill. It really okay, does. Okay, thank you very much, Matt. Have a nice weekend. With Halloween just around the corner, the big question everyone is asking, what should I wear? News Force Bill Boggs went to a huge costume store in Springfield, New Jersey, to find out, Bill, my niece is going to be Madeline. Right. What other suggestions do you have for kids? Matt, I've got everything you need to know about Halloween, and we've got it early here on Live at Five. I'm at Party City in Springfield, New Jersey. As Matt said, you know, it's amazing. And I'm going to show you what's hot in just a second. It's amazing when you get into a costume department, the stuff that hits you, the urges, and how quickly it is to transform yourself. For example, take a look at my feet. Now, that didn't take very long to do. And once you get a mask, believe me, your entire attitude on life is suddenly changed. So let me show you what's hot for kids, okay? Now, let's step over here. One of the things you're going to see that's very hot is the Lion King is very hot. Hi, how are you doing? You ready for Halloween? Yeah. Now, don't be afraid. I'm not Elvis. I know. You know I'm not Elvis. Okay, have a good time. Here's the stuff that is at the top of the hot list. Right over here, we're dealing with basically X-Men. Sizzling hot. We showed you the Lion King. The Power Rangers are big. And ninjas continue to dominate the costume show. But there's all kinds of other stuff. Ghosts and bluebeards and skeletons. Also big this year. Something I think I haven't seen before. Portable tombstones, which is all part of what makes this big night so much fun. Halloween, the time to meet your alter ego and be that character you can't be from 9 to 5, or just throw a limb to the wind. On Ghoul Night, we always see familiar faces strolling, but what's hot for adults this year? Well, we got the Flintstones. They're hot this year. Wilmer, Betty, Fred, Bonnie. They're all hot. Uh, Pebbles and Bam Bam. And what are they buying? And everybody's crazy about Power Rangers. Have you found any yet? Yes, they do have it here. And he does not want Jason. He wants Billy. <laughs> I'd like to be Tweety Bird, at least. Uh, I was thinking about being Mark Antony, but... Maybe a nun <laughs> with my friend. Twin nuns. <laughs> Kids are going big for Power Rangers with all the accessories like light-up swords. Questions of political correctness always abound. You could say that Frankenstein is behaviorally challenged. I'm looking for a costume for a costume party, a 40s cigarette girl. Isn't that politically incorrect? Sometimes you have to be these days. I also found out that Michael Jackson, you couldn't get the licensing right to a mask, so the MJ fedora is as close as you can come. We got the Grim Reaper here. Anything you want to say? Back to you, Jane and Matt. That's it. <laughs> All right, Bill, thanks very much. If anyone ever belonged in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, it is John Lennon. And now some of his oldest and most treasured possessions are headed there. Bill Boggs explains. So many years ago, who would have imagined John Lennon's high school report card being enshrined as a museum piece? That's exactly what happened today at a press conference as Lennon's widow, Yoko Ono, agreed to loan long-saved Lennon possessions to the Rock and Roll Museum that will open next year in Cleveland. I have so much feelings for these things, so I wasn't even sure whether I wanted to uh, actually exhibit them. Coming directly from Yoko's closet at the Dakota 
was the jacket John Lennon wore on the Sgt. Pepper album cover. The guitar he played with the Beatles at Shea Stadium with taped on notes. And the black leather jacket Lennon took to Berlin for his group's earliest performances. How do you feel when you look at this stuff now, after all those years ago? I feel a sense of incredible warmth. And I feel that, uh, that it's nice that I'm finally deciding to share it with the public and people who love John to see this work. The exhibit will also feature a book of comedy that Lennon wrote and drew at age nine. Handwritten lyrics to Lennon compositions. And those memorable John Lennon granny glasses that have had such a stylistic influence over the years. The museum curator said there's a worldwide search for material related to rock and roll. The contents of many closets will be going to Cleveland. It's nicer that it's here than in, in my closet. I can always in my closet <laughs> for something else. <laughs> Bill Boggs, News 4, New York. So you have plans for the weekend. There's plenty going on, and it's all free. Take Manhattan's Brazilian Street Festival. <laughs> Festival. News 4's Bill Boggs is there to tell us all about it and other events going on this weekend. Bill? Yes, thanks. So you know you can really relax this Labor Day weekend if you want to, but you can also totally burn yourself out at all the free festivities that are going on. I'm here on West 46th Street. Take a look at these flags. They're already flying, getting ready for the people to celebrate the big Brazilian street festival here on Sunday afternoon. It's going to feature two large stages, bands, people imitating Karma Miranda food, which I'll show you in a moment. And that's just one party this weekend. Steel drums are playing today at City Hall, tuning up for the biggest West Indian carnival outside of the islands. It will feature concerts, competition, and the official West Indian American Day costume parade on Monday from Utica Avenue to the Grand Army Plaza. The biggest free concert of the weekend is Monday's Bluegrass Bash with musicians ranging from John Hartford to a Russian string band and the Grammy-winning Nashville Bluegrass Band strumming away at the South Street Seaport. Want to buy a painting? The biggest outdoor art show in the United States with works from about 350 artists is available all weekend, noon to sundown in the Washington Square vicinity. Having a bad hair day? Well, change your identity by attending the 10th annual Drag Fest Wigstock. Sunday between 1 and 9 and Saturday Night Live's Pat will appear. On Long Island, 85-year-old Count Basie alumnus Carl Fiddler Williams headlines a free swinging blues concert at the Phelps Lane Park. Starts at 7. And if you're not at the beach in New Jersey, why not stroll the Rutherford Labor Day Street Fair and watch dancing, magic, clowns, and puppets from Ames Avenue to Lincoln Park. Well, I'll give you a little sample of what it's going to look like here on Sunday. This is Luis Gomez, the owner of Viva Brazil Restaurant. We'll show you. Let's take a look, if we can, at some of the food you've got. Let's have what you're going to have this coming Sunday. Yes. All right. Here's the food. Let's take a look. This is traditional Brazilian food, right, Luis? Yes. That's uh, what we what call it. Finger it? food. This is a chicken pie, chicken pie, uh, uh, cutfish croquettes, shrimp patties. Uh, the, uh, the What? What? The Brazilian what is this? What is this thing? Well, this is a uh, uh, stuff with the chicken, you know, a little uh, uh, Brazilian concoction. Uh, the concoction? Yes. We have a concoction for you right here. <laughs> All right, Louis, I'll eat the concoction yes, a little bit later. Little, yes. Now, what's going on here, sir? This, we have a red beans uh, mixed with the uh, collard greens, uh, some of uh, right, here are the uh, ingredients sausage, over here. Uh, uh, sausage, uh, tapioca flour, which is uh, we call a uh, farinha. And we mix all the whole thing together with a little, uh, little bit of it, and uh, that's what we call feijão tropeiro. Very, very typical uh, Brazilian kind of, of uh, Western uh, uh, food. So, what's it going to be like on uh, 46th Street on Sunday? This year, Sunday, man, it's a, it's a beautiful. Everybody comes from all over the place, uh, Washington, Farza, maybe uh, t uh, Texas, and they have a good time. And, uh, Celebrating uh, that Sunday. soccer victory, all right? Yes, after 24 years, yes, we deserve yeah, a big uh, commemoration. Have a good time, and, uh, Sunday. Congratulations. Oh, yes. And uh, why don't we have a drink uh, to study uh, 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 right. the Brazilian Independence Weekend here? Celebrate that's Brazil. Good. All right, the weekend is starting. Matt and Sue. Have a nice Labor Day. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Tell Luis not to be upset that he couldn't think of the name of that, that one thing. We put our heads together. It's a knish, is what it was. <laughs> now let's talk about pizza, the oh, perils of pizza. No matter how you slice it, everyone knows it's fattening, but just how bad is it? News Force Bill Boggs joins us live now from a popular pizza spot that's not far from Times Square. I don't want to hear this bad news, Bill. 
Well, it all depends what you want to eat, whether it's bad news or not, James, but I'll tell you. Have you ever stopped to think of how many pizza places have the word Ray in it? There's a Ray's Pizza. There's a Ray Barry's Pizza. There's a Ray's Pizza down in Greenwich Village. There's a original Ray's Pizza. There's a Ray's House of Pizza. Well, I am standing right now in a place that calls itself the famous original Ray's Pizza, and seated behind me is the man who claims to be the original Ray. He's saying number one Ray. Well, he doesn't speak a lot of English, so he may not have read the New York Times today where they rip the lid off fat in New York pizza like this. The Times reported that some of the most popular pizza places around town are serving slices of pizza that weigh up to 10 and a half ounces and tally over 600 calories and 25 grams of fat. The Agriculture Department says that a slice of pizza is only two ounces with just 140 calories and 3.21 grams of fat. Domino's Pizza Chain claims the serving totals five and a quarter ounces with 344 calories and 9.5 grams of fat. And Pizza Hut says a 4.4 ounce slice has 253 calories and nine grams of fat. So some New York pizza servings are big and practically quivering with fat. What do the pizza eaters think? I presume if you're eating a piece of pizza, you know it's high in fat content and the satisfaction value is worth it. I enjoy pizza, so I really don't care. <laughs> it may be high in fat, but it tastes good. Pizza is everywhere, frozen, sliced, or delivered. It's here to stay. So what should a pizza eater do? By limiting yourself to one slice of pizza, it can still be a healthy part of your diet if you balance it with lower fat meals the rest of the day. Do the pizza pros think that customers will be affected by the Times report? Not really. I don't eat that much fat either. I have a high cholesterol. That doesn't affect the business. I eat pizza as a bread and eat the sauce. Not really. I mean, you eat a slice, you enjoy it. That's basically it. And if you're a real health conscious person, then it's a different story. All right, well, here's a piece of pizza that did the best in the New York Times survey, the Garden Delight Pizza, 11 grams of fat. Kind of subtly advertised here at Famous Original, less fattening. Kind of get the hint? Let's say, hi, pizza eaters. How are we doing? Let's say a quick hello here to the man who said you claim to be the original Ray. Yes. A, you're a real pizza entrepreneur. The number one Ray, the, the all in all. Okay. Well, Ray. The one that can bend the, all, everything in the pizza. This is the man who claims to be the original me. Ray. Ray, say hi to Live the Live and one that can bend the, the pizza. How do you, you prove it? it? I prove it. I started now with the Garden of the Light pizza, the fat, low fat the cheese. The number one in New York. I just want to see your nobody, license. Nobody, I want to see your license with the word no, Ray on it. Nobody, nobody started before the meeting. Say goodbye to Live at Five. Hi, Live at Five. Take care. <laughs> bye bye. I'm going to eat the Back to you, Simmons. <laughs>